can't remember the difference between effect and effect, struggling to figure out what exactly is the main point of a passage, unable to solve for X, well, you're in luck because the UC system has a plan to scrap the SAT. On today's episode of Headlines, we'll be looking at the new national security law, cyclone Amphan, COVID updates, some good news, and finally, a big decision from the University of California system. Welcome to Headlines. Last Friday, China drafted a new proposal for Article 23 of the Hong Kong Basic Law that is aimed at addressing treason, secession, sedition, and subversion in the city. The law, which is dubbed the National Security Law, was announced last week at China's National People Conference, the most important political event in the country by Premier Li Keqiang. The law will give Beijing the ability to send its own officials into Hong Kong to address anything that they deem treason, secession, sedition, or subversion. Additionally, protesting will probably be criminalized. Essentially, many Hong Kongers are worried that a large chunk of their civil liberties will be lost. The law was brought about as a response to last year's sustained pro-democracy unrest. Beijing officials claim that it was important to enforce law-based and forceful measures to prevent, stop, and punish such protests in the future. But their hopes of preventing protests was as short-lived as Meghan Markle's time in Buckingham Palace because by Sunday, pro-democracy protesters were back on the streets and calling for mass action against what they see as a challenge to the autonomy of Hong Kong. Anger was in the Hong Kong air just hours after the law was announced as a group of protesters stormed China's liaison office in Hong Kong on Friday. The local government has openly expressed their support for the law, stating that it would cooperate with Beijing to enact it. The financial market took a large blow when the law was announced. The Hang Seng Index dropped by 5%. Carrie Lam assures us that it isn't, but could this be the end of Hong Kong's freedom as we know it? Next to Southeast Asia, tropical cyclone Amphan wreaked havoc across India and Bangladesh, killing at least 112 people and flooding roads, downing power lines and wrecking houses. Amphan made landfall on Wednesday at the Sandarbans, an area around the India-Bangladesh border home to 4 million people. It then turned towards Kolkata, a bustling Indian city that was the capital of the British Raj. West Bengal Chief Minister Bhavata Banerjee said that the storm was a bigger disaster than COVID-19. One of the primary reasons that so many people died is because of COVID-19. No one wanted to go to a cyclone shelter that was crammed full of people because who wants to catch COVID? Speaking of COVID, you must be thinking, what are the latest updates on it? The number of people who have died in the USA due to COVID-19 has crossed 100,000. While this is definitely sad, it was expected, given that the country is being run by a president who is treating the coronavirus like a press reporter in the White House. Badly. To Africa, the continent that's probably laughing at the rest of the world for finally realizing what it's like to live with a contagious and fatal virus. Africa has received very minimal coverage over the last few months regarding the coronavirus, primarily because there haven't been many cases there compared to other countries. But last week, the coronavirus tally in Africa crossed 100,000. With poor health facilities and understaffed hospitals, experts say that many countries in Africa will soon witness an explosion in cases. Finally, the real down under, New Zealand. Prime Minister Arden has arguably dealt with COVID-19 in the best possible way, ensuring that the small island country didn't turn into a hotspot. This next interaction shows why. As she updated the country on plans to reopen restaurants and schools during a Facebook livestream, PM Jacinda Arden noticed that her viewers were concerned that she was tired. She had plenty of reason to be, managing New Zealand in such a successful way that it was leaving lockdown with just 21 deaths and a few active cases is no small matter. But Arun played this off and blamed it on the beige curtains behind her, which were dimming the lighting. After showing her viewers around the house, she concluded the live stream by bidding them well and promised that COVID-19 would soon be behind Team New Zealand's 5 million people. Next to some good news. The new show anchored by John Krasinski, which was entirely dedicated to providing good news to its viewers amidst a global pandemic and came in as a breath of fresh air minus any virus. Last week, SGN was picked up by CBS for a whopping $1 billion. Although sudden, it wasn't a surprising move since the show has garnered 17 million average viewers per episode and it's only published six, as well as a following of over 1 million subscribers. Many people weren't happy with this decision as the comment section of the final episode showed. 
CBS stated that John Krasinski would no longer be hosting the show, but he would be an executive producer. Fans complained that Krasinski was just cashing out, essentially turning a free and uplifting YouTube channel into a paid video series. It looks like the show might have to change its name because this really isn't some good news for a lot of people. Finally, the USA, specifically college. The University of California system, which includes some of the nation's most prestigious and academically successful institutions, including UC Berkeley and UCLA, announced last week that they plan to discontinue the use of SAT and ACT scores for admissions. The SAT and ACT are standardized college entrance examinations written by over 7 million students worldwide every year. Although it has been predominantly successful, many schools and students have complained that both tests are unfair and unequal and are built for the success of affluent students. So, last Thursday, the UC Board of Regents came to a unanimous decision to scrap their requirement for the SAT and ACT and have decided to implement their own standardized test in the coming years, one that aims to be fairer and unbiased. On that note, that's all for this week. I'll see you next time on Headlines.